Hi guys, I'm Marky again and welcome back to Revit House. For our part 2 of our Revit user interface discussion, we will use our sample architecture project. So we just need to click this sample architecture project to open it. Yep. So now this is our Revit user interface. So, so we can start from up here. These are this is called um, Revit application menu. So once you click here earlier when we don't have any open project, we can also click the application menu and customize the options bar. And we can also see the basic commands like new, open, save, and save as, export, published, and print as well. Then the one on top is called quick access toolbar or QAT. So under QAT, you can see a lot of basic command like 3d view creating 3d view the default 3d view dimensions measures save and open and these two are the default also which is the switch windows and the close hidden windows so by default it is on top of this ribbon so usually for me I usually put this one under the ribbon or below the ribbon so most of the time the, the reason why I put the, the quick access toolbar below the ribbon because there's a time in a Revit uh, version that sometimes the quick access toolbar is not visible when it's on top of the ribbon so that's why I get used to putting it under the ribbon and it's much more nearer than the um than rather than on top of the ribbon okay so this is the ribbon so the ribbon con uh, have this different ribbon tabs different ribbon tabs is categorized as per the discipline so we have the architecture tab and the structure tab with the structure commands and system tabs then we have the insert, all the link CAD, link Revit, IFC, um, import CAD, images, and when we'll need to load some families, annotations. So they are grouped according to their use. And we have the analyze, massing, massing and site, collaborate, view, manage, some add ins. And modify okay so what happens here is I accidentally double click this bar so when it happens it toggles this portion here which is minimize to tabs minimize to panel tiles and minimize to panel buttons so minimize to tabs meaning it's just all the ribbon tabs when you click here and then it will show all the ribbon panels when I'm using the minimize to panel tiles it will be the ribbon tabs and all the panel so these are called panels when I click again here and it will sh show the minimize to panel button meaning every panel is like a button so when I hover your mouse here or hover my mouse here I can see all the commands under the build panel but most of the time I still use the default one because here you can see a lot already and you won't have you won't need to just hover to the panel before you can see all the commands so it's much more faster in that way we normally use the these options to minimize the tabs if we need to screenshot something so that we need the full screen of our monitor so but while in working uh while in working session we don't usually minimize and do that so if ever you happen to double click the panel then you just have to 
go on this drop down arrow here and then you can just click and then just go through the default ribbon again okay now this part here are the info center if you need to search anything by the net you can just directly click here and it will direct you to the web browser and then if you have the Autodesk account you can log it in here okay so earlier this one I, I told you that this is the ribbon so these are all the panels ribbons are divided into panels as per their use so we have this uh, for example for the architecture we have the build panel which is all the building tools column component window doors and the circulation we have the railing ramp and stairs and the rest is, is as per their use they are group as per what they are uh, what they can perform according to the to their categories so down here is the options bar so every command if I select something there should be some options bar here that uh, can be used for some options like for example this viewport element I can have the rotation on sheet and change it the the orientations of the view right okay and then we have here our properties palette under our properties palette or inside our, our in our properties palette we have this type selector for example this title block here is an a1 metric if I want to have a different type if for example I loaded some a3 metric I can just click here and then look for an a3 metric but for for this example file we don't have any load uh, loaded family that is more than the a1 metric or other than the a1 a1 metric okay then this is called the properties palette yep and then this is called the project browser projects project browsers are or project browser is the um, your navigation or indications is of where you are at in inside the Revit so for example here this view if I'm looking of what uh, where am I inside the Revit it is the the highlighted one or the bold uh, text in in the, in the project browser so the bolded text inside the project browser is where you are at in the inside the Revit user uh, in the inside the Revit working session. So for example, I want to move to level one. So I just have to double click in the project browser the the view that I wanted to go to. So for example, a level one. So we double click on level one. Then I, then Revit will show me the level one view. If I want to go to view the the site view so this one will be the site view so for example we want to go to living room 3d view so this one will be the living room 3d view and so on and so forth okay so the arrangement of properties and project browsers are on top of each other so there's there are various options to to arrange the properties and project browsers so there there's one like if you just click the name of the project browsers or the name panel of the project browser you can just put it on the side of the properties if you have a large resolution screen then you can put it side by side so that it will be more easier to navigate and look for your views rather than half half then properties as well you can have the whole height of your screen so it will maximize your uh, working session there's also an option if you have a minimal or lower resolution of your monitor you can combine these two as per panel so you can just click the two properties and project browsers uh, to uh, concurrently as per what you needed 
so it's up to you guys what you prefer so for me in the office I usually have it on both ends okay I have to highlight on moving the panel so moving the panel most of the time it was misinterpreted it is misinterpreted so most of the time when you hover your mouse you look on the you always look on the side panel and then you're trying to hover your mouse that this one will attach if the side panel is aligned to the left hand side or right hand side of the panel and most of the time it happens like this so the panel or the properties palette is mounted onto the top then you keep on repeating it again but the actual or easiest to 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 mount it onto the left onto the right or we just have to click the panel and then look into the mouse where your mouse is and then you hover your mouse to the side panel irregardless that this one is overlapping already outside so you just have to click the side panel and then it will be mount there then for this one I'll mount on the right side Oops. there so yep so those those are your project browsers and properties pan palette and then down here is your view control bar view control bar is your control with the scale uh, with the detail level and then your shadings your graphic display options shadow sand patch crop um, this hide isolate we will discuss it more on as we go along to this series then reveal hidden elements temporary view properties and the rest okay then we have here some navigation panel if you are in 2D, there will be no orbit, so it will be a the the wheel will be for 2D only. So mostly our pan and zoom. So some quick zoom to fit, zoom all to fit uh, commands. And then down here is called the status bar. The status bar is the one that uh, gives you the idea of where you are at or what commands or what uh, what flow of commands that you need to do or what's the next step to, uh, for this command for example I'm commanding a wall so under the status bar it says click to enter wall start point so basically he Revit informed me that I'm commanding a wall and then I need to pick the start point so when I click the start point so take two so when we command the wall in our Revit then status bar will tell me to click to enter a wall start point so click to enter a wall start point so I will click anywhere from the screen and then it Revit will show me the wall that I'm using so under the status bar it will tell me the enter wall endpoint space flips for orientation as you can see here when I click this when I uh, toggle the space bar you can see that the finish from exterior and interior is changing the orientation okay so when I click the endpoint it will show me the wall okay so that is your status bar and this area here where you are drawing or modeling is your drawing pane so the drawing pane is where every view or every model that you are doing so down here we have some of the other utility tools so for example this room legend is a pinned element and I don't want all the pinned element to be selected so I just have to simply cross this one out and now I cannot select all the pinned elements so when I deselect or remove the cross out 
then I can just select again all the pinned elements so even our wall earlier I pinned it so if I unpin it and then I cross this one out again so the wall can be selected again but if I pin it back then it will be it we, we will not be able to select it okay so that will be our pinned element so I just cross this one out and then everything I can just un unpin it there so I can just select everything that I want okay next is when I when I select something there's there's a highlighted element here this is called the contextual tab the contextual tab is actually the the options or the direct tool as per your element that are selected for example this wall so my contextual tab for the wall i have the mode to edit profile or i can have the wall opening attach top and detach top and base yep so those are called contextual bar even i'm in the structure and there's a default modify here even i'm in the any other place in the ribbon when i click on something revit will automatically go to the contextual tab that are related to your element so for example a wall will have a modify walls so those are your contextual tab so that's most of our revit user interface so next next uh lecture will be our revit navigation so when how do we select how we do how do we uh, orbit how do we do 3d view so those navigation tools will be on our next lecture so i hope you you have a good time with this lecture and just continue to follow my my channel and we will go on with this lecture series so if you like the content of our lecture series please click the like button and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button to follow our lecture series talk to you soon